This is green. Green is keen. Do you like green screens, I say? I do not like them, Perry J. I do not like them. Please, just go away. But you might like one if you could see the different things you can do with green. So would you, could you fly in the air? Or river dance in someone's hair? Of course. Of course. Of course. You could, but I do not recommend that you would. But the possibilities can be seen if you open up your mind to green. I bet you'd like one if it was small and not a big gigantic wall, but something simple, easy and clean. With some easy tips to shoot on green, let me show you what I mean. Go away. Now, the uh, technique of keying and using a color to create a matte or a background plate has been around for many decades. Before that, complicated setups uh, using matte boxes and matte paintings were created to do a special effect shot. Well, with advancements in technology, chroma keying, which was developed for television and is more synonymous with your local weather TV guy, uh, it's become a viable method for both producers of film and video alike. Now, there's a lot of debate over which color to use when keying, and rightfully so but pretty much any color can be used. Let's take a look. Here we have a shade of purple. About there. Good. And here we have a shade of red. Right there. And excellent. Now, the most common, of course, are blue and green. Uh, the color blue was uh, adopted by uh, film producers because skin tones have very little blue color in them. Uh, green is used with video applications because uh, video cameras retain a little more detail in the green color channel. Now whatever color you decide to use, make sure that your talent is wearing nothing similar to the color of your background, or this is gonna make your job extremely hard. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. You know, I think a, uh, a common question that probably comes up for all of us when dealing with keying is, you know, why don't my keying efforts look like that of the great Hollywood flicks of today? They're shooting on a same solid color as me, right? Well, for one, these are typically shot on film and that format lends itself to uh, easier effect shots using this technique. But also, in most cases, you're trying to do this by yourself or with a very small team, where a typical Hollywood blockbuster like this has uh, teams of effects artists working during the production to get it right, and oftentimes an even bigger team of post-production artists performing uh, complex composites and even uh, rotoscoping frame by frame to achieve a perfect mat for the shot. Now, if you can afford to do this, my phone number's in the book, but if you're like me, you need to come down to reality and think in terms of what you can do with what you have. All right, here we have a simple four by eight piece of uh, hardboard or masonite that I purchased from my local home mega store. It's got a uh, kind of a glossy white surface on the front of it. I guess they use these a lot in kitchens and bathrooms, but it's the, uh, the back of this thing that got my attention. Uh, it just has a nice smooth surface that'll be good for painting. So I'm using this for a couple of reasons. One, it's cheap, like under 10 bucks. And two, it's got a nice smooth finish that'll take a nice matte paint finish really, really well. And it's also really lightweight, which is good because what I'm gonna do is screw this to a spare wall. So if I ever wanna take it down, I can do it really, really quick. Now this is great for those of you that are shooting out of your garage. You don't have to paint an entire wall, and when you're tired of looking at it, well, you unscrew it and you take it down. Now I went ahead and put a little primer on this before I painted it. Uh, it just helps the, um, the paint to stick to it a little bit better. It also helps for better coverage. Now as far as the uh, color of the paint, I could have gone ahead and uh, purchased a uh, chroma color green from some outfit and paid about 60 bucks for this couple of gallons. Now there's nothing wrong with this paint. It works great, it does exactly what it's designed to do. But since I'm doing this demo on the cheap, I went down to my local uh, paint store and uh, found the wackiest color green I could find. This happens to be a, a Reptar green. It was in the crazy kids color section for doing a children's room in some sort of theme. But it's gonna work great for our purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish painting this 
All right, now that we've got our uh, piece of hardboard painted and mounted into position, um, it's time to apply some simple lighting techniques to this to, to get it lit up. Now today I'm gonna be using uh, the 2000 watt lamps uh, equipped with some soft boxes. Now if you don't have a soft box for your lights, that's okay. You can always use a little piece of diffusion material or tough spun that you can clamp to the front of your light. So basically, let's go ahead and get this thing on. Basically what it does is it kind of breaks up the beam of light and essentially kind of acts as what a softbox does. It's just a kind of a cheap alternative uh, if you don't have a softbox. But since I do, I'm gonna go ahead and get those into position. Let's get this off to the side. All right, now what I wanna do here is get a nice even wash of light uh, across this green hardboard. And to do that, I've gotta get these uh, lights at equal intensity and distance and height from the wall. So let's get these overheads off and get this dialed in. All right, let's go ahead and get this one on over here. And kind of dial it in so it's just filling in that right hand side. Good. Not bad on that side. Come on over here. Get this one on. And uh, kind of swing it around. Raise it up just a hair and maybe in. And that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in the camera all the way so I can look for any uh, gradients or hot spots on the green. And uh, there we go, fill the screen with that. Um, maybe make a couple little more adjustments. This is looking pretty good. I think it's time to light up our subject now. Now for our subject, you need to get him as far away from the wall as possible with the space that you have. And in our case, it's about 10 feet. Uh, that way you can light him separate from the wall and reduce the amount of spill that would either hit him or uh, reduce the chance of a shadow falling on your green wall. As far as lighting him up, I'm going to use a 1000 watt lamp with a softbox and I'm just going to bounce the fill with a large white card. Now for our backlight, I've gone ahead and mounted this 300 watt lamp to a C stand. I've got it out and um, above our subject so it'll hit their shoulders and their hair. This is just going to improve our separation between the subject and the green wall. Now since I'm kind of working in some limited space here, I'm going to use a scrim to kind of knock down the amount of light coming out of this lamp. Um, these work great for that. And also to this light, I'm adding an amber gel. It's a really light amber gel that's uh, basically going to, oh, kind of enhance the hair light on our subject. And it's just going to help us pull a better key. Let's take a look. All right, let's pull out here and see what we got going, huh? All righty. Well, you can see that we've got our key light, which is another 1000 watt lamp um, housed in a soft box. It's acting as our key and uh, it's doing its job, just kind of uh, lighting me up really well. We've got our little reflected bounce card over here, just filling in this side with any, you know, helping to fill in with any weird shadows or anything like that. Let's kind of zoom in here and go ahead and turn on our hair light that we put up there. This is just gonna help with any kind of, uh, with some separation between me and the green wall behind me. We clipped a little amber gel to that to help out as well. So, there you have it. With a setup like this, you should be able to pull a key with just a couple of steps. To find out, let's give it a whirl. Come on down to Jimmy's Used Car Center this weekend. No cash, no credit, no problem. So come on down. We got the best prices and service around. Get on down here. Let's mix this up a little further, shall we? All right, let's uh, go ahead and get things cleared off here so we can uh, set up for this little iPod ripoff shot here. Good, get that out of the way. Excellent. Okay, why don't we uh, fire up the lights on the wall? Good, looking good, uh-huh. And we'll move this up to the front. I'm gonna use that just as a little source light here. Excellent. And uh, how about a reflector? Okay, everything's in place, looking just about good. Turn off the overhead lights and... Well, there you have it. So if you're working on a tight budget and even tighter deadlines, try to keep your green screen efforts really simple. When you move up to a bigger wall like this, you can start doing more complex composites or cool things like this. 
Well, that's about it for this week. Thanks a lot for watching. Good luck.